Thanks, Matt. So uh, next up we have, and I had some people asking me about uh, Christopher's presentation. They said, is it about monkeys and poop? Um, I guess I should have included the, the, the full explanation of the title, but uh, Christopher is going to be talking about how uh, Unicode, Unicode can affect your uh, security. So um, once again, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, definitely keep chatting in the Zoom chat, add questions in Zoom th through the Q&A, and you can always tweet about us uh, or about the conference using the hashtag, it takes a crowd. So yeah, without further ado, take it away, Chris. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me and see the presentation? Yep. In full screen? Yeah. Awesome. So thanks for, for giving me uh, the time here to present my, my last research, with, uh, which I did in the recent, I think, six months. Um, first of all, I think I'm the first not native speaking presenter here. So uh, if my English is not so good, excuse me, I will try my very best. <clears throat> so let's start. Um, today I'm going to talk about Unicode, especially Unicode encodings, where UTF-8 is the de facto standard nowadays. Um, but before talking about Unicode, some words about the older world before. Maybe start with, with some words about me. My name is Christopher, I'm from Germany. I'm a security consulting, working for a German car manufacturer, doing pen testing all, all day. Uh, in my spare time, I'm trying to do some kind of bug bounty. Uh, I'm a member of, of the Cynic team, but currently I'm very retired because um, yeah, I have not so much time. <clears throat> and you can also see on the, on the bottom right, uh, I like tattoos. Uh, if you are a little bit older like me, in the mid thirties, you should recognize that little picture. It was an animated GIF, which was out there since the mid nineties. And as my, my wife is a tattoo artist, she put it on, on my leg. <clears throat> So let's start with the historic ASCII. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Informa Inf Information Interchange. It was established very long ago in the 1963. What is ASCII? It's a seven bit character set. So seven bit means we can only use it for 128 characters. Uh, I got here two examples. If you look at the capital letter A, uh, it is in decimal form 65, in hexadecimal form 41. The hexadecimal is very important for us because when talking about Unicode, which is represented everything in, uh, in, in uh, hexadecimal, we will see this again. And what you can see here when looking at the capital A and the little, and the not capital A, the little a, uh, they are exactly 32 uh, extended from each other. So for Americans, it's okay to have 128 characters, but when you think about, okay, like me, I'm from German, we have that weird, weird umlauts. So that A with the two dots above, uh, this cannot be represented by ASCII. So, uh, what happened uh, to also represent capital, uh, letters which are not in the ASCII standard, the ISO consortium thought about it and said, okay, we need some more characters. Then there was the ISO 8A59 standard created. Uh, this has eight bits in compared to, to the seven bits of the ASCII standards. And now with eight bits, we can uh, display 256 characters. What you see here, this is the ASCII, uh, the, the ISO 8859-2 standard. So we have not only one ISO 8859, we have different. So we have one for Central Europe, then uh, several others, e.g. For, for Eastern Europe. But what's very important, ISO is completely ASCII compatible. So if you have uh, an, an ASCII document, an ISO document, and only ASCII char uh, characters are inside, it's exactly the same. <clears throat> but as we not only have 
letters here in Germany with the umlauts. We have different languages, Japanese, Chinese, which couldn't be represented with the ISO standard. There was the Unicode Consortium, which was established in, in, the, in the early 90s and in 1991, uh, they created the first Unicode standard. What's very important about Unicode, it's a multi-byte character set. What that exactly means, I will show to you in the first slides. Again, Unicode is also fully ASCII and ISO compatible. Uh, that's very important. For example, if you have an ISO document or an ASCII document and would like to convert it to UTF or to Unicode, this is uh, very easy. Very important, Unicode is not a character encoding. Unicode is more like a database which uh, gives you a relationship between a code point. A code point is what you see here for the capital letter A. The code point is U plus 0041. The code point to a character, in this case the characters Latin capital, Latin capital letter A, and some attributes. <clears throat> With Unicode, you can uh, you can uh, sh you can um, display more than one million characters. Uh, you see in the upper part we have again the ASCII and the ISO, which are completely uh, within the Unicode part. And then we have first the basic multilingual plane, which are the first fifty thousand five hundred thirty six characters. And then we have the astral planes, which makes over a million. And now comes the interesting part, and which is the very, very problematic regarding uh, our security. When you look in the table uh, at UTF-32, you see, okay, for every code point I want to represent, I need four bytes. So from a security point of view, it's very easy. Every character needs four bytes, but when you think about memory consumption, this is bad. Because when you had a document which was saved in ASCII, only using ASCII symbols, and then you convert it to UTF-32, UTF you would get four times the size of the old document. So for security, it's very easy to use this, but nobody uses it nowadays. So within the complete web standard, the UTF-8 was chosen because it's very memory, uh, memory uh, sensitive because you only need as much bytes as the character needs to be represented in the hexadecimal form. <clears throat> and in the further slides, you will see what this will make for problems. <clears throat> so what you see here is a little C example. Uh, when talking about C and talking about uh, we, need, uh, um, we need parameters which could be chosen by a user dynamically, it's always a problem when we need to uh, malloc so when we need to uh, malloc some memory on the heap or on the on the stack. So what you see here in the upper part, uh, what this little function should do, uh, it gets string one and string two. It measures the length of the string, and based on that measuring, it mallocs uh, the size of characters uh, on the heap and then it concatenates it with that SNPrintf function. Now we see that malloc does size of char. A char in C has all, always one byte. So, but now we have seen that UTF-8 is a multi-byte uh, char set, which can have one byte, but which also can have four bytes for each character. So what the developer, I copy and pasted it uh, from Stack Overflow, the baddest source for secure code. What he's trying to do, he tries to measure the input strings, so string one and string two with a measure function. And what it returns should be the length of the string which is inserted. 
But the problem is he measures the length of the strings and not the actual size of the strings. So when you have new TF8 character, uh, capital letter A, it have one byte. But for example, if you have the pile of poo, this is not one byte, it's one symbol, but it has four bytes. So what you get here is a classical overflow. In this case, a heap overflow. Now you can think, okay, we are talking here about web application. What does that mean for me here? But uh, in my in my pen tester lifetime, I've seen so much old code which was reused, which was an old C program, and then the developer had had uh, the job to port it some kind to the web. And what he does, he uses a CGI, a CGI environment, ported this old stupid code uh, to a web application. And after all, when the user is able to input UTF-8 characters, this will crash the application. <clears throat> Another example here, JavaScript, a well-known web language more, more common than C nowadays. So what you see here, uh, we have a compare operation. We have the Spanish word manana. I think it's in English, it's morning. And what would you expect here? You have manana equals manana. And as I choose it here, it will give you false. Now you think, why is this false? It exactly looks the same. Now the interesting part is in UTF-8, <laughs> uh, it, it's not like what you see, what you get. It's what you see is not what you get. So what you see here is, the first manana is manana with exactly that one UTF-8 character, the N with the tilde above. And the second manana, you see the N is here within that string. And the UTF-8 character is only the tilde that is applied to the letter before. And when you then look at the length of the two strings, it's uh, easy to see that uh, the one, the first manana is made up of one, uh, one special UTF-8 character with the tilde above the M that had six, and the second has uh, seven ca characters. And when you think about this, when implementing some kind of whitelisting for any input validation filter or something like that, if you implant, implement uh, this on a server side with Node.js, you could think of that it's very, very, very hard to get it right when user is able to input UTF-8 characters. <clears throat> and later on in the presentation, you will also see that I not uh, I, I don't telling you any any stories that there are real world examples where bug hunters. Uh, make use of this uh, and earn good money. <clears throat> then another JavaScript uh, example, now not with the compare function, now with a regular expression. You have here a regular expression, which is foo.bar. So when you're familiar with a regular expression in JavaScript or regular expression common, the dot operator should exactly um, uh, match one character. It doesn't matter which character, but it should match one character. So, and what we test for is foo, then the pile of foo bar, and what you get here is again, it's false. Now you ask why it's false. It's one character. <clears throat> we can extend the test. Now we have the regular expression. Uh, okay, it starts then there is one character and then it ends uh, and test it again for the pile of poo and we get again false. So this also fails. Then what we can also try, we tr uh, try it with backslash little s and, and backslash capital S, which uh, means in regular expression, please match for any white space, white space character and the capital S for any non-white space character. So normally you would think it should match anything, any character, but even when we test here with a pile of foo, it also returns false. And 
On the bottom, you see how the correct regular expression to only match that one pile of poo looks like. This is because the current JavaScript, which is implemented in all browsers, as, as of my knowledge, is still uh, ECMAScript 5. And ECMAScript 5 had huge trouble with all characters which are in the S12 planes. So all characters which are not in the first 50,500 something uh, characters of the Unicode standard, uh, are not completely supported per default by JavaScript in ECMAScript 5 nowadays. There are several workarounds for it, like that uh, one uh, regular expression you see on the bottom. But uh, when you think uh, a an, an developer should implement a whitelist filter or an input validation filter for such uh, UTF-8 uh, SVL planes, uh, you can realize that this will uh, go wrong in 99% of all cases. If you want to test it yourself, go to that HTTP scriptula. There's someone implemented a regex, a regex um, application with JavaScript, and there you will see exactly the same results. I tested it today with the latest Firefox and Chrome, so I'm quite sure that ECMAScript 6, 6 is currently not implemented within the browsers. <clears throat> so now from the front-end technology JavaScript to uh, the back-end, here in that case it's MySQL. Uh, as the title shows, MySQL versus UTF-8. You can realize or you <laughs> will, will see that something weird is also here happening. What we do here, we create a table, table name, uh, we have two columns, one is ID and the other is column name. And as you see in the bottom row, um, we set the char set, char set to UTF-8. So from a developer point of view, okay, I have done everything right. I know that users uh, can input UTF-8 characters, so I set the char, char, char set to UTF-8. And let's see what's happening. <clears throat> What we do here, we update uh, the, the first entry with ID 9001 9, with a color main foo uh, pile of foo bar. And what happens now, it's accepted, but we see in the, in the result that there is one warning. Now, when we look at the warning, there the MySQL database states incorrect string value for column, column name at row. Okay, something weird has happened. Now, when we look at the table <clears throat> and get back that 9001, uh, that 9001 I entry, we see that the column, column name is only foo and not foo um, pile of foo bar. So, we see that our, end, uh, our input was truncated. But when you think about a developer is implementing that query within any web application, um, no one would ever see this warning. <clears throat> and shout out to the Facebook guys, uh, they even haven't been aware of it. But there's a solution. <laughs> uh, MySQL is capable of a full UTF-8 UTF-8 standard. If you set the character set to UTF-8, MB4, which stands for multibyte 4, if you set this character set, which isn't set by default, uh, your, your database or your table can take all over 1 million UTF-8 characters. So now let's look at the real real world attack scenario. In the first case, uh, I tell it here, attacking a victim. Before we attack a web application, uh, let's look what UTF-8 also impacts our security in the IT world. What you see here, the email, um, getting bigger. 
Uh, it's from Dieter Chatze, the chairman of the Daimler AG. Uh, and if you look at that little eye in the domain, you can realize that this is maybe not the original Daimler domain. What's happened here? Since 2009, we have the ability to register IDN domains. IDN stands for Internationalized Domain Names. Um, so by using this IDA do IDN domains, everyone has the possibility to register UTF-8 domains with all characters, even the pile of poo. So for the, ca for the case before, I registered the daimler.com domain with that eye and that uh, little little head above. I don't know what's, I think it's a French character. I don't know how it's called. <clears throat> what's interesting, <clears throat> why does this work without, without changing the complete DNS infrastructure? Uh, you don't register the UTF-8 domain name. You register it in a form that it's called Punicode. It's a transcription. You enter the UTF-8 domain name and what you get back is a Punicode and that, that Punicode transcription must be registered at the top level domain registrar. Um, that's very cool because no one has to change anything within the DNS systems. It works out of the box. But when you look at the Wikipedia article of that IDN domains, there's also a little article about ASCII spoofing concerns. Because in the case of my Daimler domain, if you look very closely, it's easy to spot. But UTF-8 has also other symbols, like for example, the Cyrillic I, which exactly looks like the normal I. So no one can spot it. Here, what you see here is the Punicode converter. So when I wanted to register that Daimler.com domain, uh, I entered it. And then on the right side, I got the Punicode transcription. And exactly this is what I registered at the registrar. <clears throat> when I registered it and I thought of, OK, I registered the Punicode transcription um, I was aware of the browsers display that unique uh, that UTF-8 um, domain names without uh, showing the Punico trans transcription, but I thought, mm, I don't know, can I use it for email? Can I use it for phishing? And uh, interestingly, here is a little, uh, little screenshot. When I sent the mail uh, directly by, by a Linux system without any GUI, uh, even that I inserted the transcript, the Punicode transcripted uh, domain name in the uh, sender field uh, when it was received by the exchange server, it was nicely converted back to the UTF-8 standard. So thank you, Microsoft. Uh, let's make phishing very easy. Um, I did this, I think, in February this year. And then in, in April th th this year, uh, there was big rumors because someone was able to register epic.com and apple.com uh, with that uh, Cyrillic, Cyrillic uh, letters. Normally, uh, this shouldn't be possible because according to um, guidelines of every top of every top level domain, uh, which I looked at, so the famous one, .com, .de, .org, .net, uh, you are not allowed to register domain names with mixed, uh, mixed um, alphabetic content. So you are not allowed to register a domain with has Cyrillic letters and also Romanian ones. But uh, when I looked at, at uh, within uh, at the 18th of April at the registered domain, I saw yeah someone regist registered it, and the registrar was Google. So maybe Google hasn't checked for it, and Nick.com hasn't realized that someone registered it. And uh, after that, the browser vendors uh, realized okay, displaying that 
uh, non-punicode transcripted, so the UTF-8 uh, uh, letters and characters is maybe not bad, because uh, when someone is fished, no one can realize it. And when I tested it today, uh, the latest Firefox and latest Chrome uh, do not display UTF-8 anymore. They display uh, the Punicode transcripted version. Um, I think I can skip this because for bug bounty hunting, this is not important. It's only uh, using DNS twist to find uh, a domain name which looks like the other. But as you can see here, even IDN domains are also interesting, uh, interested for bug bounty hunters because here, <laughs> uh, Hacker1 uh, paid a user 500 bucks because he realized that he can put in UTF-8 uh, characters in his uh, bug bounty reports and they are not converted to, to Punicode. So that uh, any vendor which uh, makes use of the Hacker1 bug bounty program uh, is, is able to get fished by a, a bug bounty hunter when he's writing a report. So, Another very interesting UTF-8 character uh, is called right to left overwrite. It has the code point U plus 202E. What does this do? I think a lot of you uh, are familiar with this kind of attack. Um, with that Unicode character, you can do uh, overwrite from right to left. When you look here at the screenshot, we have that backdoor exe, and uh, when we use that Ruby command, we can also do this with Perl or Python or on Linux directly native with shell commands. We are able to rename <clears throat> that uh, exe file, so that backdoor underscore ppt exe, to a file. Uh, which then gets as extension the .ppt. You see on the Explorer view, uh, there are all, all extensions are enabled. Uh, but by executing this command, uh, the extension is changed to ppt, so to a PowerPoint file, even if it's e executable. That attack is very old. It, I think, is known since Windows, Windows uh, Millennium or Windows 98, but it still works nowadays. But what has this to do with bug bounty hunting? So um, I think uh, all of you are familiar with Snapchat. In Snapchat, uh, you have the possibility to exchange file uh, to to send other domains, and uh, not only domains, URLs, which link to some kind of content. And uh, this guy was able uh, to realize that he could use the right to left over right to change the extension. In this case, you see here, he sent uh, an URL to example.com with song exit.mp3. So when thinking about that uh, overwrite, you can imagine that song exit.mp3 is, is not a mp3 file, it is an exe file. And here's the bug report from, again, Hacker1. This uh, gives him $250, Euro, uh, $250 uh, which was paid by, by Snapchat. So, and, and what I realized uh, today, uh, WhatsApp uh, allows since yesterday to send uh, not only uh, image file and, and music files like it was before, now you can send every files. So if when, when Snapchat was, was vulnerable for it, maybe uh, WhatsApp is also vulnerable for it. So go, go, go and get money. <clears throat> Another funny story. Um, I think every one of you who Got an, got an iPhone in, in 2013 has realized this. There was that uh, string 
I don't know which language, some some Arabic Arabic language. And when this string uh, was sent to a user of uh, of, an, of an iOS device or of Mac device in in any application, so uh, in the message application, in iMessage, in WhatsApp, even when wireless access point had that SSID, the complete device crashed. There was a memory corruption error, I think, uh, in the rendering engine. I don't know exactly was which rendering engine it was, uh, but this was very horrible because uh, when this was sent, for example, through iMessage or, or, or SMS, uh, you got the preview and your device, device rebooted. And every time your device uh, uh, went back, it showed you again the preview and rebooted again. So it was a loop which could only uh, be fixed by resetting your device or if the bad uh, attacker sent you another another text message that, which then replaced the preview of the bad, bad Arabic string. It was even so worse that uh, Facebook uh, realized that a lot of people are sending that string through the messenger that they implemented a filter which uh, denied people from from sending uh, this to other users. So this message contains content that has been blocked by our security team. Because this was a problem within the iOS and, and OS X operating system, uh, it took some days or even weeks until Apple released a fix for it. So it was really bad. <clears throat> Another story about uh, how difficult is, it is to, to um, accept UTF-8 and handle it correctly is this, this example. I call it uh, front end, don't love back end. You see uh, one, one uh, Mercedes site which allows a user in, within his profile settings to set his name with UTF-8 characters. Uh, in this case, I set the pile of poo, and when I did this, this was during a penetration test, uh, I realized that something is weird and the obvious functionality is not there anymore. And then when I looked uh, into Burp, I saw, okay, there are some new 500 errors, what's happening now, and when you look at uh, the error message, you see internal server error, spring framework, uh, JP system exception, matches could not execute, uh, and then some problem with Hibernate, so JDBC exception. So what happened? So the front end developers thought, okay, it's okay to allow UTF-8, and the back end developers were not aware of it, and then some SQL query or some Hibernate query uh, uh, appeared and that UTF-8 character, the pile of poo was in and then the application, the backend crashed and the complete functionality was broken. <clears throat> so it's always very interesting uh, to think bigger and think if you have interconnected application, what happens when I insert at any place a UTF-8 character, an astral, uni an astral symbol UTF-8 character, so that one which takes up to four bytes, uh, then you can in, in many cases be sure that something happens which no of the application developers were aware of. <clears throat> So now I would say this was a P1. Um, I don't know exactly, I think it was in 2012 or 13. The link is here. I can uh, recommend it to you all to read because it's a really great one. Um, Spotify was vulnerable to account hijacking. Um, and how was this possible? So. Spotify, I think, were very early when allowing users to set usernames with all UTF-8 characters which are out there. So that uh, 
that researcher found out, okay, I can register a user with superscript characters. So in this case, let's say he registers a user Big Bird with superscript characters. He also knows that there is another user Big, Bo Big Bird not with superscript, uh, already a, a valid customer of, of uh, Spotify. So what he what he does, he registers a big bird with superscript, and after that, he triggers uh, the forget password function. What now happens? The forget password function uh, use that superscript big bird and uh, throws it in the canonical function. So to canonical the user to get uh, it back without UTF-8 representation. Now, what's very important uh, when handling with UT8 and canonicalization that uh, the con canonicalization is uh, idempotent. That means that uh, regardless how often you throw the UTF-8 uh, string in that function, it always should get the same back. So what here happened that superscript uh, Big Bird was inserted and Big Bird in uppercase letters was uh, sent back. So Big Bird in uppercase letters uh, was exactly um, in the database the email which was which was sent uh, by the by the uh, attacker so that big bird superscript was represented by the upper, uppercase big bird um, so the attacker got back the password reset email for his account and inside that email was the reset link now when he clicked the reset link the backend again used that canonical user name uh, function and throw in the big bird in uppercase letters. And what now happened is that canonical username function was not idempotent. Uh, it returned big bird in lowercase letters and the big bird in lowercase letters was the other victim user. So when he reset the password with his token he received in the mail, he didn't reset the password for that superscript Big Bird user, he reset the password for that uh, Big Bird user with low, lower letters. So by this, he was able to hijack every account. <clears throat> In the earlier phase, I, I uh, said a shout out to the Facebook guys. A fabricator is a product. Uh, it's like GitHub, but it's uh, implemented implemented by Facebook itself. Um, and when you look at the fabricator instance of Facebook, when you want to register it, and the attacker here tries to register with email evil at hacker.com. What he gets back is an error message which tells, hey, evil at hacker.com is not allowed. You need a at FB, so at facebook.com address. Okay, so when you realize what I told uh, before about MySQL and the problem regarding UTF-8 compatibility, what the attacker here does he told, okay, email address evil at hacker.com, pile of poo at fb.com. And what happened is he was able to register within that application. So uh, we can say the pile of poo is the new percent zero zero, so the new null, null byte. <clears throat> so to summarize up, for developers, verify that message functions frameworks can handle Unicode at every layer, front end, back end. Uh, input validation should also handle Unicode characters because nowadays all browsers are capable of Unicode. So you must be aware 
that users or attackers try to insert that Unicode characters. And especially when you have interconnected systems, make sure that every system is capable of handling Unicode. So for, for us hunters, go and inject the pile of poo and uh, automate it, implement it in tools because every tool I use on a daily basis uh, does not try to insert any Unicode character currently. So acknowledgement, I would like to thank Matthias Benens. He's currently working at Google. He made also a great UTF Unicode presentation in the Ruhr University Bochum some years ago. And I would like to thank Buckrod for giving me the time presenting this here. Thank you all for your time. It was a pleasure and I'm now open for Q&A. Awesome. Uh, let's see if we get any questions through the Q&A. Um, yeah, Rick just said your English is great. So it was. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I, I wonder if um, there's any other presentation. You definitely win the award for um, most use of the phrase pile of poo um, at yeah, yeah. the Level Up conference. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Mind-blowing presentation, Fatih says, which is awesome. Uh, OK, we got a question here for you. Um, is this exploitable normally, or special configuration is needed? Um, how do we identify if the application is vulnerable? copy and paste it in your browser and test it if it allows UTF-8. <laughs> so I would think that a lot of applications currently accept UTF-8, but shouldn't accept UTF-8. Okay. So. Uh, let's see. Sahil asked, he, he wants to ask how you can use hidden characters in a URL. Why hidden characters? All right, let's see. We've got one more minute, so if anyone has any questions, submit them quick through uh, the Q&A thing on Zoom. All right, I think that's it. Thanks, Christopher. You're welcome. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, that was a really great talk. We've got a lot of applause for you right now in the uh, Zoom chat. Um, again, if you enjoyed the presentation, guys, definitely uh, tweet uh, out uh, what your thoughts were, what you liked, what you enjoyed. Um, you can follow Chris on Twitter. Um, his username is Schniggy, I believe that is, S-C-H-N-I-G-G-I-E. Is that correct, Chris? Perfect. Cool. Yeah, follow him, tweet at him. Um, and yeah, we're going to get into Aditya's presentation now. So, Perfect. Thank you so much, all. Great. Thank you.